everyone, I am Halle Diana Castaños, I'm 5 years old, and I'm from the Philippines. As we celebrate the World Day for Cultural Diversity, I spread love, peace among the people of the world. To my fellow children, let's love one another and promote friendship. In this time of pandemic, don't forget to wear a face mask, wash your hands, and stay on your house. Once this is over, we are free to get out, meet our teachers, friends, let's meet at school. Have a wonderful celebration. Thank you and stay healthy. Bye! USA. I bring you all a happy World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development. I am in 7th grade at Maxine Smith Steam Academy, born to Filipino mom and American dad. I recognize my biracial roots. I love my being American and I long to reconnect with my Filipino roots. I am grateful how my parents and my school have instilled in me the sense of respect for cultural diversity to foster peace, understanding, and acceptance of one's culture, regardless of our roots, identity, language, and appearance. We hold this very meaningful celebration to remind ourselves that we need to be more accepting with one another and to celebrate our uniqueness and diversity as a people. Through this, we become more united and we can move forward as one. Thank you and more with her. With a joyful heart, I would like to greet everyone a happy World Day for cultural diversity, for dialogue and development. With much pride and honor, we in Haninwai National Comprehensive High School, Schools Division of Iloilo, are one with the world in this beautiful celebration of diversity. Our diversity unites us in one common goal in aspiration for humanity. We, locally known as Ilongos, support all forms of effort and initiative towards global understanding and advancement. And I, Rain Julian de Villeja, your active Ilongo youth, leave you with a popular Filipino tagline, Mabuhay tayong lahat! I am Avis Sheikh, wishing you all a happy World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development. I am an engineering aspirant with a Muslim family living in India. Each region in India has its own unique cuisine, music, language, custom, religion and culture. Hence it is called the land of unity in diversity as we all live in harmony and peace, accepting the diverse culture we share. We support all forms of efforts and initiatives towards global understanding and development. Assalamu alaikum. Happy World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development. I am Sadat B. Minandang, school head of Darping Elementary School, Schools Division of Cotabato City, Ministry of Basic, Higher and Technical Education, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, joins the whole world in celebrating our being diverse, yet we have common goals and aspirations for humanity. We are Maguindanawan by tribe from Cotabato City, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. And we support all forms of efforts and initiatives towards global understanding and development. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be with you.
The things we do and the practices we were taught in our community defines who we are and who are we in the future. When you go out into your comfort zone, you will encounter people from different backgrounds and walks of life. What is cultural diversity and why? The world is filled with people who have different beliefs, religions, traditions, and ways of living. It is within our differences that we can find you, both in educational and professional environments. Cultural diversity benefits everyone. It paves the way to better problem solving, more empathy and compassion, deep and learning and approaches the world from various perspectives. What language do you speak? What is your religion? What is your ethnic identity? What is your culture? Culture is a broad term that encompasses beliefs, values, norms, behaviors, and overall can be understood as our way of being. Cultural diversity is the existence of variety of cultural groups within a society. Cultural groups can share many different characteristics, culture, religion, ethnicity, language, nationality, sexual orientation, class, gender, age, disability, health differences, geographical location, and the lots of other things. Cultural diversity is very important in every setting in life, but it can be even more pivotal when it happens within education. Students around the world have the right to equal access of quality education, and as such, there are many upsides that come along with it when institutions believe in the power of diversity. Cultural trends have significant implications for the educational needs of the youth. Learning about and valuing diverse cultures will help prepare youth to become better citizens in an ever-changing society. It's a good rule of thumb to honor cultural diversity with, with our, our actions. actions. Cultural diversity! It's worth celebrating! Bayang magiliw, pelas ng silanganan, alab ng puso, sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng magiting, sa manlulupid, di ka pasisigil. Sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa langit mong bogaw, may dilagang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal. Ang kislap ng watawat mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning Ang bituwing na araw niya kailan pa may di magkidilim Lupa ng araw ng walhati pagsinta Buhay ay langit sa piling mo Aming ligaya na pag may mga api 
Let us offer a moment of silence for the prayer to be led by Mr. Brian Gumban. We prayed together with the highest form of respect to all faiths. We prayed to all divine energies, forms, and forces. We pray as one humanity for all humanity. We pray to praise and give thanks to the creator of the heavens, the universe, the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, and all forms of life. We pray together for compassion, peace, understanding, prosperity, and forgiveness. We pray that the heavens shall continue to shower blessings for our needs, for safety, and for good health. We pray for protection against calamities, diseases, and conflicts. Touch our hearts so that we may see humanity in each one. We pray for comfort in times of distress, for strength in times of weakness, and positivity in overcoming all forms of challenges. We pray for an ending grace and healing that we, in return, become instruments of gentleness and kindness to others. We pray for renewed youthful strength as we continue to serve our families, our communities, and the world. We pray that we always see that we are the same despite our differences 
that we can rise above the challenges, that we can live harmoniously with acceptance and less judgment. We pray that we live happily, free from the bondage of ignorance, oppression, and poverty. We pray that we continue to protect our environment, our ancestral lands, waters, and air. We pray that our leaders will serve as examples, especially for the children and the youth. We pray that our bond being a community will draw us closer in the spirit of compassion, collaboration, and unity. We pray that we overcome our tendencies to judge not by color nor faith, nor by cultural practices. We pray that we shall be given more opportunities to communicate with one another, to build human connection, to appreciate our talents and to see our brothers and sisters who are in need. We pray that we shall be guided in our thoughts, words, and deeds so that we contribute meaningfully to community, nation, and the world. We pray in silence for our personal intentions. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the celebration of the World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development. We thank you for taking the time to join us. Before we begin, we have a few reminders for our guests. First, Please turn off all sound notifications while attending the session and ensure that you are in a place with no background noise or echo. Second, turn on your microphone only when you take the floor and make sure that you are always muted unless you are speaking. Third, turning on your camera while speaking is highly encouraged. And last but not the least, please look presentable. Once again, good day. I am Abigail Molina. And I'm Carmen Thea Samoro. We will be your hosts for today. For the information of everyone, we are also live on Facebook via DepEd Philippines and DepEd ICO pages, and on YouTube via EmpowerEd channel. Just to give you a brief background, the World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development is a UN-sanctioned international observance for the promotion of respect for cultural diversity and the discussion of other related issues. It is currently held on the 21st of May every year. In celebration of this global event, the Department of Education International Cooperation Office, in collaboration with the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, Region 6, 7, and 8, Balay Patawili Incorporated, and Panay Indigenous Culture Advocacy Group, is hosting the International Youth Forum on Cultural Diversity. This virtual forum aims to feature young voices who have led in fostering cultural understanding, responsible global citizenship, peace, sustainability, and development. The voices of the youth matter in the discussion of local and global issues and efforts to address our most prevalent problems and challenges. Providing a platform for young minds to express their experiences and insights on how to attain global understanding despite cultural diversity would nurture in them responsibility towards their communities and for them to contribute meaningfully to societal welfare and development. That's right, Thea. The youth is defined by the United Nations as those persons between ages of 15 and 24 years old without prejudice to other definitions by member states. However, the operational definition and nuances on the term youth often vary from country to country, depending on the specific sociocultural, institutional, economic, and political factors. In the Philippines, the Filipino youths are those who are 15 to 30 years old as defined in the Republic Act 8044 also known as the Youth in National Building Act of 1995, which established the National Youth Commission and the National Comprehensive and Coordinated Program on Youth Development. To formally start our program, let us listen to the opening message of USEC ASUS 
L.R. Mateo, Department of Education Undersecretary for Planning and Human Resources and Organizational Development. To the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, Region 6, 7, 8, Balay Patawin Incorporated, Panay Indigenous Culture, Advocacy Group, UNESCO, Empowered, my friends, colleagues from the Department of Education and the Secretary for Curriculum, USEC Dads, San Antonio, our friends from Region 6, World Acclaimed Youth, Malala Yousafzia, and Greta Thunberg, featured youth speakers from different parts of the globe, young leaders, students, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant day to all of you. The World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development, an annual UN sanctioned international observance for the promotion of cultural diversity and other related issues, is held specifically every 21st of May. It is with great pleasure to celebrate this global event through the International Youth Forum on Cultural Diversity as organized by the Department of Education together with stakeholders, featured young voices and participants. I strongly believe that we should provide a platform for the youth to be heard, especially the voices of those who are making a meaningful difference in fostering cultural understanding, responsible global citizenship, peace and development around the globe. We need to be reminded of how learning about different cultures leads to understanding and respecting various perspectives in the world we live in. As cultural diversity is as necessary for humankind as biodiversity is for nature. Embracing cultural diversity dispels negative stereotypes and personal biases about different groups, which results in achieving harmony among cultures. We must also remember that our actions can impact others either positively or negatively. By being responsible global citizens, we become more compassionate towards one another and more caring towards the environment. As we face the current pandemic, it is all the more imperative to contribute meaningfully to societal welfare, care for each other, and join hand in hand in transforming our communities. I would like to commend the youth speakers in this virtual event. Your inspiring endeavors will surely address prevalent global challenges and issues that have made a huge impact in the society at large. And through your efforts and spirit of activism, you have made the important, emphasize the more important role of education plays in so social transformation and dissemination of authentic information. I salute and commend you for igniting faith and hope, not just in the young leaders and learners of your generation, but also among us, the older ones, with your experiences and insights on advocating global understanding and unity. Despite coming from diverse cultural backgrounds to projects and other notable initiatives, Current day issues are layered in context, hence having people offering perspectives that enrich the pool of insights and ideas can lead to better problems of day. I am very optimistic that the innovative projects that you will share will create a ripple, ripple effect to different communities. I hope that this event makes participants appreciate further the diversity of thought and perspectives that make learning more interesting and dynamic. Lastly, I would like to encourage everyone to continue promoting empathy in respective courses of interacting with people who have diverse practices, beliefs, and life experiences. I believe that empathy leads to better understanding and acceptance of cultural backgrounds and promotion of all peace. May everyone continue contributing to the cultivation of cultural understanding and mutual respect. Stay empowered as inspired global citizens who practice compassion 
and empathy in words and in deeds, no matter the circumstances. Thank you. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you very much, Yusek Mateo, for the very meaningful opening message. And now let us hear the message from the Assistant Director General for Culture, Ernesto Otone Ramirez of UNESCO Paris. It is my great pleasure to join you today in celebrating the World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development. This is our day to celebrate cultural diversity and all the beauty and richness it brings to our lives. In the face of COVID-19 in particular, we have all relied on culture and the arts to help us feel connected and to give us a sense of hope. Yet today is also an opportunity to recognize that cultural diversity is a resource for meeting the challenges of our time. From climate change to conflict, to inequality. As young people, you are often taking the lead to solve these challenges. You recognize that diversity is a strength, not a weakness, and that respect for cultural diversity is a precondition for peace and development. You are also a creative generation. The cultural and creative industries employ more young people than any other sector. Supporting young artists and cultural professionals is a key goal of UNESCO as we mark 2021 as the International Year of the Creative Economy. Mahatma Gandhi once declared, our ability to reach unity in diversity will be the beauty and the test of our civilization. If we are to pass this test to achieve sustainable development and peace for all people, we must continue to celebrate, protect, and promote cultural diversity, not only on the 21st May, but every day. Thank you to all the young leaders present here today for taking this mission forward. Thank you very much, ADG Ramirez for that very inspiring and empowering message. Now, let us listen to the message of the youngest Nobel Prize laureate and advocate for human rights and education for women, Ms. Malala Yousafzai. Hi, I am Malala Yousafzai and I'm a girls education activist. I know that for some of you, schools might not be open yet, while for some of you, they have reopened, but you are uncertain about going back to schools. But I want you to remember that nothing is more important for you than education, especially if you are a girl. Parents, teachers and leaders, we know that 12 years of education for girls strengthens our families, communities and countries. Please do everything you can to make sure all girls can re-enroll in school. Students, Schools must be safe for you and your teachers. Remember to wear a mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands to protect yourself and everyone around you. Whether your school is open or not, I hope you will do whatever you can to keep learning. Even though it may have been many months since you have been to school, don't lose hope and don't give up on your education. I know you have dreams and ambitions, and I believe you can make this world a better place. It all begins with education. So go back to your school as soon as it's safe. We hope that you were inspired by the message of Ms. Yusuf Sai. Now, let us listen to another message from Ms. Vanessa Nakate a climate justice activist and one of the youth activists who spoke at the 2019 United Nations Climate Change Conference or the COP25 held in Madrid, Spain. My name is Vanessa Nakate and I'm a climate activist from Uganda. While I was in Davos, I took part in a press conference with other climate activists 
Unfortunately, I was cropped out of a photo and this really made me feel so bad and frustrated because it made me realize how people from the global south are not given a chance to speak or they're not listened to and heard by the people who are supposed to. It is important for media to cover stories from different parts of the world because every climate activist has a story to tell. I must say that every country has a climate activist and these activists deserve to be listened to, they deserve to be respected because they, are, they all have stories to tell. So for those who say that I shouldn't have spoken up, that means you're trying to promote injustices. People face different kinds of injustices from various parts of the world and racism, discrimination, they are one of the injustices that are affecting people, destroying people's lives and killing people from different parts of the world. It is important for all of us to speak up against any kind of injustice that is brought unto us. Everyone has their rights and they deserve to be respected. Thank you very much for your message, Ms. Nakate. Help us welcome the Director of the International Cooperation Office, Dr. Margarita Consolacion C. Ballesteros, for her message. Good evening, Director Marge. The floor is yours. Director Marge, um, I think you're on mute. Thank you, Abigail and um, Thea. Good evening, everyone, to our colleagues and friends in Southeast Asia. Good evening. And to those who are in, in East Asia, it's good afternoon. To the other parts of Europe and in the United States, I think it's good morning. So I'm asked to deliver a celebratory message. You have heard our a very able and very smart MCs wherein they made mention earlier why we're celebrating the International Day for Cultural Diversity, Dialogue and Development. The ICO or the International Cooperation Office is proud to celebrate the World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development this 21st of May 2021. This day provides us an opportunity to deepen our understanding of the values of cultural diversity and to advance the four goals of the UNESCO Convention on the protection and promotion of diversity of cultural expressions, which aims to support sustainable systems of governance for culture, achieve a balanced flow of cultural goods and services, and increase mobility of artists and cultural professionals, that is, to integrate culture in sustainable development frameworks and promote human rights and fundamental freedoms. This day celebrates not only the richness of the world's cultures, but also the essential role of intercultural dialogue for achieving peace and sustainable development. It is also an occasion to promote culture and highlight the significance of its diversity as an agent of inclusion and positive change. It represents opportunity to celebrate culture's manifold forms, from the tangible and intangible, to creative industries, to the diversity of cultural expressions, and to reflect on how this contribute to dialogue, mutual understanding, and the social, environmental, and economic vectors of sustainable development. The International Cooperation Office of the Department of Education, ably headed by Under Secretary Nepomuceno Malaluan and uh, Yusek Jesus Lorenzo Mateo, and of course, under the leadership of our very uh, dynamic and young at heart Secretary, Secretary Liling Magdolis Briones. We are delighted to collaborate with the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples or NCIP of Region 6 and 7 and 8, the Balay Patawili Incorporated and Panay Indigenous Culture Advocacy Group or the PCAG for today's International Youth Forum on Cultural Diversity. When we 
speak of young people, when we speak of the youth, I cannot help but remember what our national hero has said regarding the youth that they are actually the future of this land and if I may say, the future of whatever generation that is yet to come. The youth of today claim to be there. This, they are the, the, the Zen generation and the Alpha generation is coming over and they will also be the young people in the next years to come. Young people of today, young people tonight who are watching us, listening to us here in the Philippines, my challenge will always be this, that you have to really be yourself, get to know who you are, get to know what you want to become and pursue it with all passion and commitment with a thought or with a vision that you as young people should also be making a difference in today's society to better improve the world that we are all in. So it is my hope that all of us together, no matter where we are from, no matter what religion we have, no matter what state of life we do have, and no matter what faith or what culture we are all in, we are one in celebrating the beauty and richness of our diversity. Good evening and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Director Marge, for your wonderful and sparking message. For our next message, uh, let us welcome the Director of the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples of Region 6, 7, and 8, Director Augusto B. Maglunsod. National Commission on Indigenous Peoples. What makes this world beautiful is that everything in it is unique. From the tallest mountains to the tiniest details of the snow peaks, nothing is exactly the same. Truly, diversity is our nature, and our nature itself is a diversity. Human beings, being part of nature, are the most diverse and beautiful of all. This is because, aside from our genetic differences, we are unique in all aspects from our beliefs, customs, traditions, to personalities, abilities, and strengths. It is only sad that instead of embracing our unique characteristics, some people made it the cause of separation and conflict when it could have been the reason for cooperation and helping each other. Being the most vulnerable of all sectors, our indigenous peoples suffered much of this discrimination and prejudice. At some point, it created a stigma against them and all other races and groups that despite all our efforts to eliminate, continues every day. To this very day, we can hear from daily news, killings and fights as a result of racism and religious conflict. Indeed, it is not easy to totally end discrimination because it dates back to historic years of wrong notions and beliefs that for most of us, it was embedded in our minds, especially on the part of our older generations. That is why the role of the youth is very important in putting an end to discrimination and injustice. This is because the new generation is more adaptable and responsive to change compared to the older generations. Like the saying that goes, if you want to bend a tree, do it while it is young, as you could no longer bend an old tree. For our young generation, you are our hope. Don't look into at its other differently. Rather, Look at each other uniquely. See this world in the light of the rainbow. That has a perfect blending of different colors. None is superior. None is inferior. Everyone has a role to play. And everyone is equally entitled to live and survive. Even the distant galaxies are made of different stars, big and small 
but the light, the sky, with the combined brightness at night. Cultural diversity is important for national unity and development. With variety of knowledge and skills, we can learn from each other and complement each other's weaknesses. Each different group can contribute different ideas and introduce ways to improve our society. Through coexistence and cooperation, we can be proud of ourselves and each other as diverse people living together in one world. Let us celebrate our uniqueness as expression of unity for the furtherance of national peace and harmony. Thank you very much. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Thank you very much, Director Maglunsod, for your message and for challenging our youth to embrace their role as future leaders and change makers. For the next message, let us welcome Dr. Ruel Bermejo, the Schools Division Superintendent of the Schools Division Office of Iloilo, who is also representing the Regional Director from Region 6, Director Ramir B. Oitico. We are diverse, but we are one. To Ms. Stefania Giannini, Assistant Director General for Education, to Mr. Ernesto Otoni Ramirez, Assistant Director General for Culture, UNESCO Paris, France. Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones, Department of Education, Philippines. Under Secretary Jesus L. Armateo, Under Secretary for Planning, Human Resource and Organizational Development and Field Operations. Under Secretary Jusdado M. San Antonio, Under Secretary for Curriculum and Instruction. Director Margarita Consolacion Cibalisteros of the International Cooperation Office, Department of Education. Director Agosto B. Maglunsod of the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, Region 6, 7, and 8. To Dr. Ramir B. Oitico, Regional Director of DEPED Region 6. We in Region 6 truly believe that every child is a champion. We strongly support the regional mantra initiated by our regional director, Ramir B. Oitiko, whose trailblazing leadership has empowered us to raise the bar and reach new heights. To our partner organizations, EmpowerEd, Balay Patawili Incorporated, and Panay Indigenous Culture and Advocacy Group, or PICAG. To our exceptional youth leaders and speakers from the different countries, Mr. Aniket Naido from India, Ms. Janwarsti Sopramita Ningrom from Indonesia, Ms. Kaidi Kama from South Africa, Mr. Aydin Kwach from Canada, and Mr. Renel Lavilia from the Philippines. To all our virtual participants, the young ones and the young at heart, welcome to the International Youth Forum on Cultural Diversity in celebration of the World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development, as declared by the UNESCO to be observed every May 21 annually. I wish you all happiness, hope, strength, and safety as we continue to wrestle with the present pandemic. Today, we celebrate two gifts to mankind, cultural understanding and youth power. Cultural understanding is our ability to look at how diverse our backgrounds are and still manage to work harmoniously and to nurture respect and acceptance. It is overcoming our tendency to be judgmental and prevent racial and ethnic divisions. Racial and ethnic divisions, if not managed well, will result to misunderstanding, loss of opportunities, and violence. In fostering understanding and in achieving community transformation and development, we cannot underestimate the youth power. We bank on the agility, creativity, leadership, and wisdom of the young people. They may be progressive at times, and they may have the potential to bring revolution, but when they are well-guided, 
Their insights, talents, and impulsiveness can always be transformed into youth energy. We need to empower them as they participate in building up society and as they inspire others to do the same. Stories of youth power are around us. They keep on inspiring us to believe more on what the young people can do to rally causes for humanity. For instance, the world has been celebrating the youth power in Malala, Kreta, and Sunam. In Pakistan, Malala Yousafzai defied the Taliban and stood up for the right of every girl to have education. She was shot in the head by a gunman in 2012 but survived. In 2014, she became the youngest person to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. In Sweden, one girl stood up and challenged world leaders to take immediate action for climate change mitigation. Greta Thunberg reminds the world to be strong and straightforward on concerns of great urgency and for us to have long-term plans in confronting our institutional hypocrisies. In Bhutan, 18-year-old singer-songwriter and UNICEF Youth Ambassador Sonam Wang Chen Kandu is beloved by Bhutan's younger population for using his music and platform to bring hope to mankind during the pandemic. He wrote and recorded Chikar, which means together, and released it on national television and UNICEF social media channels. Through this forum, we aim to amplify the noble and exceptional efforts of the youth through their narratives for them to inspire others, to foster understanding and to recognize the Malalas, Gretas, and Tsunams in every community, in every country. Substantially, this forum is a platform for the young voices to be heard. Today, local and global issues will be discussed and efforts will be highlighted in addressing our most prevalent problems and challenges. We need to listen to our featured speakers to learn from their insights in attaining global understanding despite cultural diversity. By nurturing the sense of responsibility and leadership among the youth, we empower more future shapers and catalysts of change. Furthermore, we need to always highlight the idea of finding our commonalities despite our very diverse cultures. More than our differences, we celebrate our concerted efforts, our common principles and goals, our global achievements. As educators, cultural understanding has been one of the best lessons we could teach the young people and the world. The school's division of Iloilo has been grateful for the opportunities to be part of events like this. We are always ready to support all the programs, projects, and activities of the Department of Education through the International Cooperation Office and with the support coming from our stakeholders and partners. In the school's division of Iloilo, we genuinely nurture the youth, our learners, to become leaders in their communities. We support their good causes and we champion initiatives that encourage understanding, respect, and growth. Truly, we are diverse, but we are one. This is our mantra. We need to infect one another with our positive outlook, youthful zest, and humanitarian principles. We always say with conviction, para sabata, para sabayan. All that we do is for the Filipino child, for the country, and for the world. Boilo, Iloilo. Thank you very much, Dr. Bermejo, for that inspiring and encouraging message. Indeed, there is harmony and unity in diversity. We would like to extend our gratitude to our very supportive partners who are with us live and those who took time to record their video messages for this event. Now let us move on to the main part of our webinar. 
The International Youth Forum on Cultural Diversity is organized in collaboration with the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples of Region 6, 7, and 8, Balay Patawili Incorporated, Panay Indigenous Culture Advocacy Group, and EmpowerEd. The forum will feature young leaders from India, Canada, Indonesia, South Africa, and the Philippines to discuss and share their initiatives and advocacies. To introduce our speakers today, let us call on the President of the Division Federated Supreme Student Government from the School's Division of Iloilo, Mr. Wilson King Salarda. Good day, everyone. I am privileged to introduce to you our youth speakers for today. Our first speaker is a first generation student and has studied in Teach for India classrooms throughout his schooling years. Being passionate about space and research, he was a school's top notchers in science and math. Such story and dedication was captured by the NASA. A support of a unique student leadership program called I am a teenager, I am a teacher, he has been working to help his community students. He wants to become an engineer, and contribute to society as an educator. During the rise of COVID-19 cases in India, Anikat has taken upon himself to educate the members of his community in Maharashtra in the COVID-19 pandemic. Through a video, he explained what flattening the curve means in an easy to understand way. The video is already in circulation in his community. This was made with the aim of disseminating authentic information that can help everyone to protect himself or herself. Our first speaker is Aniket Balram Naidu from India. Our next speaker is a third year undergraduate student, double majoring in honors history with international relations and Chinese language and culture at the University of British Columbia, Canada. He has worked on developing a Chinese language curriculum for heritage Chinese learners and has also helped teach Japanese literature in translation. He is also a research assistant with the Hong Kong Studies Initiative at UBC, where he is working to preserve media material and artifacts from the ongoing Hong Kong protests. Born in Vancouver, Canada, his parents both from overseas communities in Southeast Asia. His areas of research are in global Chinese migrations. A correlating question is, what does it mean to be Chinese? Where do, where do the Chinese speak in narratives and history outside of China? Our next speaker is Aideen Quach from Canada. Our next speaker is a student at SMK and Cree, a state vocational school in Sumbawa. She is Extremely, extremely motivated to constantly develop her skills. She likes being in a new environment to meet new friends and learn from them. She is an award-winning artist who is into drawing and painting. She advocates education as the right of every child and youth. Recognized as a multi-talented student, she is active in almost all, all organization in her schools and community, from Red Cross to Arts Club, to environmental initiatives. She believes that the youth should engage in worthwhile activities such as the arts to maximize their potentials to become more creative, more critical, and more inspired to see things from different perspective the way people should look into cultural diversity. Our next speaker is Janwarsli Suplamita Ningru from Indonesia. Our next speaker is a matrix pupil at Rodin School. She has actively taken interest in different forms of social transformations throughout secondary school and is this year the head of transformation. For three years, she has planned gatherings called crates through the Rodin Sassy Debating Society, which she is captain of. These are inter school discussions that gave pupils platform to engage with the heated social politica, political topics they are grappling with as the youth. Past attendees 
of this discussion include advocate Tembega Niku Kaitobi and Rego Sofetsi Chikane. She is inspired and driven by the arts, active arts, activism, and history. This year, she wrote and directed a play called Death of Born Free, which delves into the ways activism affects the youth in a, on a psychological level. Okay. She identifies as a pan-Africanist both culturally and socially. She enjoys all forms of storytelling, which she sees as the midpoint between art and humanity. Our next speaker is Kaidi Kama from South Africa. Our next speaker, our last speaker, is a Panay Bukinon indigenous youth and a senior high school student in Panay Island, Western Visayas, Philippines. As a traditional artist, he is a skilled props maker who specializes in embroidery and instrument making. He is also a seasoned musician who can perform various Panay Bukinon vocal and instrumental genres. In 2019, he participated as one of the six national finalists of the National Music Competition for Young Artists at the CCP. He had also delivered talks and performances as well as participated at national and international conventions and conferences. Currently, he is exploring creative solutions in advocating and promoting instrument construction and performance among his fellow Panay Bukidnon youth. This recent inquiry is on how indigenous music can become a global language among indigenous communities across Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, our last speaker, Renel S. Lavilla from the Philippines. Thank you, Wilson. Uh, let us welcome our youth leaders from around the globe. Aniket, Aiden, Januarski, Kaidi, and Renel. Hi guys, how are you? Doing not too bad. It's a little bit early in Canada, but it's all right. <laughs> for joining us, even if I think it's around 4 a.m. in Canada. Yes, it's 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> but you look fresh. <laughs> How about you, Renal? How are you? I'm good. And I'm uh, very excited to share my own uh, advocacy and story. So before we proceed, uh, may I request everyone to give us your brightest smile as we have our photo session. So for our technical team, please take our photo. So on the okay. count of three, one, two, three, smile. And then another one. One, two, three, smile. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And again, uh, welcome to today's forum. Before we start, uh, I'd like to invite everyone to please introduce yourselves or maybe say something interesting about yourself and tell us what's been keeping you busy nowadays. Maybe I'll start with Aniket, please. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Aniket Naidu. I am from India. So I will tell you about my background where I come from. I'm actually a Dravidian, which is also commonly known as South Indian in India. So my grandparents belong to the southern part of India, but they all migrated to Maharashtra, another state in India. So Maharashtra has totally different culture, cuisine and everything different from southern part of India. So if I can say that even my family is a bit culturally diverse. So what things are uh, means keeping me busy these days are I'm an engineering student. So I'm studying in electronics and telecommunication communication now. Uh, all day lectures. So that that's the only thing keeping me busy these days. Thank you, Aniket. And I hear it's your exam uh, exam week now. So uh, good yeah. luck on your exams. <laughs> Thank, um, you. thank you, and maybe we'll proceed with Kaidi. How are you, Kaidi? Hi, I'm great. Um, so a little bit about myself. Well, I'm Kaidi Kama. I'm based in South Africa. Um, my mom's South African, and my dad's from Botswana. Um, 
yeah, another Southern African country, just um, a neighboring country right next to South Africa. Um, what I've been busy with lately is continuing to plan um, the crates discussions that were mentioned in my bio. Um, today I'm hosting a panel um, unpacking what's happening um, in Palestine. So um, the youth at my school, including university and, and university youth are going to be engaging in this discussion together. And we've invited some interesting guest speakers to um, contribute um, their insights into this topic so that um, people can walk away having an informed discussion. Um, yeah. Thank you, Kaidi. Uh, we'll be very interested to learn more about your, your advocacies and your projects in school later on. We'll proceed now with Rinal. How are you, Rinal? Rinal, I think you're on mute. Sorry. So I am Renella Villia, uh, one uh, indigenous people in the island of Panay in uh, the Philippines. So the thing that made me busy today is still the construction of uh, musical instruments, uh, teaching it to non-IPs and IPs uh, youth, and also uh, still practicing the other parts of our culture, especially in uh, traditional dances, uh, musical instrument playing, embroidery, and uh, uh, chants. Thank you, Rinal. You mentioned musical instruments. I hope you can play uh, a bit of a song later for us. Yeah. Uh, we'll now proceed with uh, Aiden. All right. Um, I'm just going to share screen. Just give me one moment. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So can everybody see my share screen at this point? I think so, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So as been had as has been said, uh, my name is Aiden. Um, I'm gonna share a little bit about like North American culture um, throughout my kind of talk today or presentation. Um, so in North America, we often like to give people our pronouns after we introduce our name. And the reason why is because sometimes, especially nowadays, it's very hard to tell if um, somebody is, you know, a he or a she based just on their appearance. So we don't like to guess that. So in, um, especially in um, North America and in Canada, Canada, we do like to um, just say, um, my name is, in, for example, in this case, it would be my name is Aiden and my pronouns are he, him, his. So there's no guessing around um, what is the proper pronoun to use for me. Um, so as has been said, I'm a university student. I'm studying both international relations as well as Chinese language and culture. And if you have never been to Vancouver, this is what my campus looks like. It's a really, really big campus dressed right by the ocean. and we are considered one of the most international universities in North America with over 80,000 students coming from all over the world, coming just to study in one space. So um, you get lots of opportunity to speak to different people from all over the world, from Africa, from Asia, from Europe, from South America, all over. And one thing that, I, that I've been doing since, or like one thing that I'm really passionate about while like a, as a hobby is dragon boating. I don't know if you guys know what dragon boating is. It's a, it comes from Chinese culture. Um, in Mandarin, we call it Duan Wu Jie, but in Cantonese, we call it Duan Wu Jie. Um, so it's a, it's a very fun paddling sport. You might have seen it before. It, you have 20 people on a boat and then you have everybody paddling at the same time. And then you have a person sitting in the front sometimes with the drum, you can see in the video. Um, this time there isn't, but um, usually there is. And it's something that keeps me you know, active. It keeps me, um, I guess, it, like it's a really fun competitive sport. And I really do wish to go back once COVID is over that I can do this with my friends. Thank you, Aiden. That's very interesting. And personally, I haven't tried that sport yet, but it's very interesting with you sharing it. Uh, lastly, we'll have Janwarsti, please. How are you, Janwarsti? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, good evening. Maganda Gabi. Before I introduce myself, I would like to express my respect to the Royal Highness of the Philippines and to the committee of this wonderful event 
for providing a platform for us to connect, learn more, and be a part of global citizens. I will. I will also like to greet my fellow speakers and the audiences who are here today. My this event can be the start of our long lasting connection and opportunity to build a better community together. My name is Januarsti from Milanirom. My friends and family call me Januarsti. I'm a student at the State Vocational School in Sumbawa, Indonesia. And I'm now studying interior design and furniture. I'm 18 years old and very motivated to develop my skills and grow as a person. I'm passionate about the issues of education and social justice, as well as environmental issues. I usually express myself through my drawings and paintings. Okay, that is, thank you so much. Terima kasih, John Westy. Thank you, guys. Oh, terima kasih banyak. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Uh, so now we'll proceed uh, with the rest of our, with the forum. I'd like to start with Rinal and Jan Warsti, since you're one of the youngest, I guess, and you're both interested in art and music. Um, Jan Warsti, would you like to share how you became interested in art and perhaps your ongoing projects? Okay. I'm starting now, okay? <laughs> um, yes. One picture in my painting, paintings, uh, the left picture or the right or left. I want to introduce my picture. Okay. Okay, I'm starting now. Okay. In the, in the left picture, is the, it is the result of painting of the Bali in online competitions. What did they mean was, what did they mean was, Rayong Bali, Rayong Bali. And the title of my painting is Nuansa Bali, which means Balinese nuances. And the right, and the, in this picture, in this picture is, is, is you can see the various cultures of Indonesia from in traditional dance on its traditional houses. You can see also flora and fauna that are endemic to Indonesia. The theme of the competition is the painting was mind revolution, and I decided to paint it about the diversity in Indonesia through my painting. Okay started as i am very passionate about the issues of education and social justice i have been actively involved in activities that promote their, their values for example i have participated in a painting competition for high school students at the national level from which i won the first place alhamdulillah the name of the competition was indeed is my revolution and i decided to do painting about the diversity in indonesia through my paintings i want to show that my revolution in indonesia is so star from acknowledging respecting accepting various culture and social background that exist in the country my painting highlight to indonesia's official model that is Binika Tunggal Ika, the which means unity in diversity. Okay, and sir, therefore, so thank you very much, Jan Marsti. Your paintings are incredible, and at such a young age, you've accomplished so much. Have your family, um, friends, or community always been this supportive of you when you first started? Would you like to tell us your journey towards your art enthusiasm? 
Okay, I will answer that questions. Give me a second. Okay. Yes, yes. I have been having a lot of support, not only from my family or my friends, or my friends, but also from my community. Our community, such as my schools and young community in my neighborhood. My journey started from drawing first, first drawing, okay? And then I started to my half my hands, my hands on painting when I was in kindergarten, kindergarten. However, I started to actually develop my painting skills at my current schools, that is SMK and SMK Negeri Tiga Sumbawa Besar. I have been indelibly trained by one of my teachers. The name is Mr. Moe. Under his guidance, I discovered my journey in painting. That is when I started to use this knife decorative. My genre is knife decorative from Indonesia genre. Which that I have been using my painting as a media to promote their diversity that exists in, the, in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Januarsi. It's indeed important to support a child's interest in art. And of course, um, that, that art and music are just as important as science and research. I'd now like to proceed with Renel since you're in the in almost the similar line. Um, would you uh, like to share with us how you become interested in music and what have you been doing in terms of your music? Okay, so I became interested in music because it is uh, makes me remember my grandfather. So my grandfather he is a folk song that a uh, singer. Uh, and also a shaman chanter, a gong player, but he passed away six years ago. So every time I heard music, the first thing that come in my mind is uh, my grandfather is alive and he is communicating with me. Uh, before beforehand, I am really desperate in learning our own culture and music. The tradition, the traditional panay bukid ng music. Um, after learning it from our cultural masters and elders, music begin. Uh, music begins uh, uh, one of my priorities, and uh, uh, and especially uh, in enhancing uh, my skills in uh, the field of our culture. I learned constructions of musical instruments and its purpose. Uh, the meaning of rhythms and how it became a source of communication uh, for our community. Uh, right now, I am teaching other non-IP and IP youth in making uh, of some instruments and educating them and giving importance to our culture and to continue making music as a way of cultural diversity. Thank you, Renel. It's very refreshing to hear that our youth still has love for folk music and they get inspired by it. And as promised earlier, I'd like to invite you to, to show us or share with us a sample of your music. We'd be very interested to hear you play. Okay, so uh, this is one of uh, our musical instrument. Uh, I think this is one of the small musical instrument of our uh, culture of our community. Uh, this is called subing. Uh, in English, it is called juice harp. So it is a bamboo juice harp, our one of our traditional musical instruments. So I will uh, play. Uh, uh, the piece is called tinagbak. So tinagbak is a female mode rhythm of our tribe, and the only person who can dance in this rhythm are only girls. It is danced by the kept maiden of our community and the uh, uh, girls who are single. So this is the Tinagbak. <laughs> Thank you. 
So thank you everyone for listening to our music. Thank you very much, Renelle. That's such an interesting sound for a very simple instrument. And before we let you and Januarsti go for this part, I'd like to ask you both, um, what is the significance of your art and your music to your respective communities? Maybe I'll start with Januarsti first. Sorry, can sorry, can you reply again? Reply again for questions? Yes, of course, sure. Um, I was asking how. Uh, what do you think is the significance of your art? Well, on your case, your art to your respective community. Okay. I will answer it. I started now, okay? I would like to I would like to believe that my art has to put colors into the someone's life. I will love it. If my art can inspire you in my region to be more productive, intellectual or musically, I want them to be more aware of diversity, reading our society and speaking up their mind about the social issues through their art, be it drawings, painting, dancing, or through their music and any other from artworks. From artworks. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you, Junwarsti. And Renel, please, uh, the significance of your music to your indigenous community? So for me, the significance of this music in our community is we use music to express our emotions, uh, our thoughts. We also use this for socializations, especially during occasions and rites. But the most important significance of, uh, is communication. So we can tell stories, we can call for an assembly, uh, we can give warning, we can court, and we can give respect to all our ancestors through music. So the Panay Bukid Non people uh, do not just look music as a sound coming instrument, but we look music as the soul of our community. Thank you very much to both of you. Indeed, art and music are our windows to our past and history and are one of the ways to preserve them. Yes, and um, speaking of culture, Aiden, um, you are also a person of color in a foreign land. And um, I heard that both of your parents were born in Chinese communities in Southeast Asia and you were raised in Canada. And I saw your website, you're also interested in Southeast Asian culture. So how did your cultural background affect your view and appreciation of global citizenship? Yeah, I can answer that question. So I should probably give some background. So for my father, he was he's Chinese, but he was born in Vietnam and his father was also born in Vietnam. So they've been in Vietnam for generations. And on my mom's side, she was born in um, Brunei and her parents were also born in Brunei. So they spent generations in Brunei as well. So they have been, you know, away from China for so many generations. And then they decided to immigrate to Canada. So suddenly we're even further away from China and we're even further away from our, like, I guess our ancestral background. So for me, it's hard for me to truly identify as somebody who's fully Chinese, just because even though like, my like ethnicity is Chinese. It's very hard for me to say, oh, I'm Chinese because I it's been so many generations since I, you know, um really been in touch with the Chinese culture. Sometimes even like people will say that my accent in Cantonese is a little bit different than what is now considered standard Cantonese in Hong Kong or in um other places in China. So 
I guess for me, the reason why I'm interested in Southeast Asia is because so many other Chinese people, so many other people from South Asia, from India, also share this kind of um, background where they are, they've, their families have spent so many years and so many generations in Southeast Asia that they cannot, like, they don't truly identify with the motherland or the homeland anymore. So that's something that's interesting to me. Um, and this kind of builds upon the idea of ASEAN as a place where we, um, as a knowledge um, library. So thinking about how different cultures within ASEAN, thinking about all the 11 um, nations, uh, nation states in ASEAN, how they can um, learn from each other, learn from the diversity of cultures within each other to enrich their own cultures. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Aiden. I'm getting that um, you got interested into Chinese culture because you are from, far away from China and um, perhaps um, absence make the heart uh, grow fonder. And uh, since you are also interested in the Southeast uh, Asian culture, um, could you share with us your advocacy or do you have any interest? And maybe you could also share what or who motivates you to pursue them? Yeah, um, I, I just wanted to go back and preface that I meant to say 10 countries in ASEAN, not 11. I should know that. <laughs> but um, I guess for advocacy and interests, I, I'm, I'm motivated by like the teachers that I've had in my life that make me want to be proud of my own identity. So especially as a student in um, Vancouver, where there's so many different cultures in the region, um, it's very, when I was growing up, I didn't see many instructors that looked like me, that were Asian. But when I went to university, I realized that there's so many people that are from Asia. They come here, their English isn't that good. They might not know a lot about North American culture and they put in the effort to learn and to share and be proud of the, where they come from. And I think that's something very powerful because I never had that as a kid. I always felt like I needed to adapt and learn North American culture and learn my the best, like, I guess the best was to be as much like a Caucasian person as possible. But then it was in, it, it was in university, it was in learning Chinese that I realized I can be proud of my own culture. And I don't, maybe I don't identify with Chinese culture, but I maybe, maybe it's a new culture that I'm building. And it's a new culture that a lot of other people like me who were first generation born in um, Canada, who uh, are from Asia or from other cultures, they're also learning this as well. So that motivates me. Speaking with other people who have the same identity as me, that motivates me as well. Thank you. And uh, I think it's really important to surround yourself with people who inspire and encourage and also uh, who can empower you so now let's proceed to uh katie uh, or kylie uh, apologies for that so we heard that you are very much engaged in social political issues uh, so how do you utilize different platform to join in or start active discussions on these issues um well there's been a combination of projects which i've led and projects that i've had like the honor of being like led in, being a part of. Um, one of an, a noteworthy thing that I had the honor of being led in is a certain that my grade started last year um, in order to make our school address the inequities that exist within our schools because of um, racial inequality, essentially. Um, this happened Right after we got back from school, after being isolated for a while, and at the peak of the Black Lives Matter movement, so um, that that just ties into like, I guess what I find passion in, which is youth speaking, youth communicating, and youth inciting dialogue to draw, to bring attention to certain issues. I think that's something our generation is particularly good at, and should be promoted. So what I do is. I create platforms for youth to do this in an informed way and in a, and in a constructive way, because like activism is going to happen. And the best thing that we can do is make sure that that activism is happening in the most effective and I guess most informed way so that it can't be discredited. And so that we're kind of like united and um, educated in terms of how we relate information. So 
I've kind of planned a few different talks over the years um, with different topics. So like um, the most recent topic I covered was um, land redistribution in the context in, of environmentalism, which is like a topic specific to South Africa, but like a lot of people within my school environment weren't really sure how to engage with it because um, I guess I go to I go to a private school and there's a lot of like economic inequities within South Africa. So understanding of, of nuances like not owning land on like a first hand basis isn't, isn't like a common thing within my school environment. So I combine that with like the this prospect of environmentalism, which is something that people within our environment would understand and attach and like on a like a deep level because of like I guess the way we engage and kind of brought that understanding through combining those two perspectives. So this is what my biggest thing is, is kind of making all of these issues that are in our face, like um, tangible for people to understand, engage with, and therefore engage in activism about. Thanks, Skydy. Since uh, you mentioned transformative activism, uh, for you, how important is youth engagement or uh, youth participation in a society? And in what ways can the youth contribute to uh, social change and um, social innovation? I'd say it's very important, if not the most important type of engagement. 60% um, of Africa's population is youth. So I'd say that youth is the society that needs engaging with. Um, because what makes youth so distinct is that we're the group kind of deciding the new standard of, the new standard of hegemony, where the group kind of deciding like um, rules of engagement that will be essential for us to have in the future. And I think that's what makes us unique and that's what makes our perspective really, really important. And also the decisions we're making are, I guess, for us. And having that type of agency in deciding these things is kind of like really, really important because, you know, if you want change done, like you need to set the standard of what that change is. It's important that the, that the group that is the majority and the group that you're making change for are the ones making the demands and setting the boundaries and setting the extents that we should be making change. In. Um, so that's how I, yeah, the most important, if not extremely important. Thank you, Kaidi. And I actually agree, youth perspective is um, important to consider. And I guess it's not just Mm -hmm. um prominent in south africa but also all around the world and i'd like to share to you guys um one famous quote from our national hero dr rosa rizal he mentioned uh that youth is the hope of our country or the youth the, the hope of our nation so moving on uh, we also have another passionate student here who is part of a student leadership program called i am a teenager i am a teacher Aniket, uh, would you want to share with us your initiatives on educating and influencing your fellow youth in your community? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, loud and okay. clear. Okay, so I would rather credit my friend Asmita Bhule for this initiative. Uh, so she once asked my teacher Satyam Bhaiya in, math, in our math class that at what age do we get jobs, Bhaiya? So Bhaiya said usually 22 or 23 at 23 or 22 or 23 years we get job. And then she asked, when do we retire? So Bhaiya said at 70, we retire usually. And uh, Asmita was quick enough to calculate that takes about 47 to 48 years of our service. And she said that Bhaiya can't we devote at least one or two years of our lives to teach in our communities because that's one area that needs maximum support. They don't have access to excellent education. So this is how I am a teenager. I am a teacher project was born because even our teacher was very interested in getting students access and exposure to the teaching, what teaching looks like, because we do everything. We play, we learn, we operate computers, but we don't know how to teach. So students get so students getting us that platform where we can teach and understand if 
teaching is for us that was one major cause and i teach in my community i teach in my neighborhood even my mother is a tuition teacher she teaches young younger kids so i help her with sometimes i'm quite popular in my community uh they call me teacher bhaiya as in teacher brother or elder brother in my community so i teach younger kids of 7th grade or 8th grade i do, mostly teach math and science i help them on regular basis and it has also helped them score better because as a student i can relate them and their problems more thank you anika uh, also i agree with you learning never ends it doesn't just stop um in in the four corners of the classroom it it sprawls out to to our lives and i think also experience is one of the best teachers and one of our first teachers as well is our family so um as an aspiring engineer i know you're you're an uh, engineering student how do you think global citizenship can be reflected in your field of work since it's, it's not very common to promote global citizenship or cultural diversity in engineering and um to follow up how do you how do you think science and humanities meet through engineering okay so engineering for me is taking science to humanity so science is basic science is how the world how the universe how the atom or even electron functions that science now how do we make sure of our skills to take that idea to take the discovery to humanity so in my ways every single thing in engineering and every single thing that we are trying to learn and move about is making a change right from development in bioengineering you know where medical science has advanced so much it's all because science because of science that was combined with engineering for that matter i want to join nasa or isro some day and try changing the world in my own modest way look at elon musk what he is doing very simple idea right if we are on one planet this this planet might god forbid the planet might have some problems of its own say sometime something that the dinosaur faced millions of years ago so he says that probability of us surviving on two planets is more than on, us surviving on one planet now imagine that such a simple logic but that is changing the world so i would want to be a part of similar project in the future and definitely make sure of science and all the engineering skills i know exactly to meet humanity and to help and to help it Thank you. Thank you, Aniket. Indeed, there's so much more to do. The more we live in this world, the more we live in this earth and use this planet, there's really so much more that we can do for it. So I guess um, I'll turn you over to Abby. Uh, yes, thank you, Ms. Tayeb. Um, as much as we want to ask more questions from you guys, because we're really curious, you are very interesting youth, and I think you have uh, so much more to share to us. But unfortunately, we are running out of time. So for our final question, um, what do you think is the importance of um, cultural diversity in your areas of interest? Um, for Januarsky, art, for Renel, music, for Aiden, it's research, for Kaidi, social activism, and for Aniket, innovation. So let's start with Januarsky. Ms. Januarski? Um, yeah, we can go back to Januarski later. So maybe we can uh, proceed with uh, Renel. So, okay. So for me, uh, without cultural diversity and without understanding what it means um i would not be able to communicate people with different cultural backgrounds although people speak uh, different languages practice different customs uh, and express different types of uh, belief uh, i believe my work in music can unite people because uh, music transcend differences and boundaries uh, through music uh, we can communicate it has the capacity to bring us together uh, and express ourselves uh, and our identities so through songs and chants 
I can remember one experience during the um, national music uh, competition for young artists uh, that I participated in 2019. Through the Subing, uh, I gained friends uh, because one of the finalists in competition uh, uh, was also a Subing player uh, from Mindanao. Uh, he is uh, a Blaan. Uh, he is in a Blaan cultural uh, community in, uh, I think it is in Tobato. So he said to me that he knows how to play, but uh, he doesn't know how to make. Uh, so I showed him uh, how to construct. And after, he offered to barter uh, his uh, traditional flute with my kubing. Uh, I think that makes uh, music uh, a good way to uh, uh, to express cultural diversity, uh, where appreciation of other's culture in the other uh, uh, and showcase uh, of respect uh, and understanding between differences. So maybe that is the best way uh, for music. Thank you, Ronel. Indeed, uh, music is a universal language. And now let's proceed with Kaidi. Um, well, my craft is conversation and storytelling. That's the basic premise of like the discussions I plan. And I'd say that hearing a story that you haven't heard before is a lot more interesting than having the same one reiterated to you. Um, <laughs> so there's that simple aspect of like why cultural diversity is really, really important to me. Um, in my specific craft, like the act of storytelling also helps us understand the ways in which we're different, but it also helps us understand the ways in which we're similar. I mean, just earlier, Aiden was speaking about pronouns. Um, and it just brought me back to this discussion I had with um, a friend who told me that their pronouns are they, them. And I just said, you know, that is just so Zwana of you. I'm I'm Zwana. And in my mother tongue, pronouns aren't gendered. So I was just like, look at us having things in common. Um, and it's just by relating those stories where you kind of just realize that, um, you know, you think you have these distinctions within your cultures and then as you begin unpacking and speaking to each other, you, you kind of realize, oh, we're very much the same in interesting ways. We just got there through different paths, I guess. So um, yeah, that's my answer to that question. Thanks, Kaidi. I agree that uh, we really discover the beauty of diversity when we converse with other people or when we meet other people. Uh, now, um, may I call on Aniket? Yeah, I am here. Okay, so the simple fact is that every single person on Earth is an innovator in some way or the other. As we engineers, we researchers need to just identify what is the area of expertise. They are innovating even without knowing that they are doing it. If we if you have watched the popular Indian movie Three Idiots, I think you will get it, get to know a lot about cultural diversity and innovation. What does that mean? So one of the top professor in India, professors in India, Professor Anil Gupta says, "Mind of a margin are not marginal minds," and by that he means that you go to any village in india you will find have you will find innovators who have been working for generations innovating things in farming innovating things in flood affected areas and, and to avoid floods or to minimize the ill effects of it so there are innovators across every single village across every single region in india we just need to identify those celebrate those and share the learning with the rest of the world in my sector or, or area of interests that's innovation cultural diversity plays a huge role and we all need to do it do, do it so collect the data or information and make it for much bigger and greater use thanks uh aniket and indeed uh, there's an innovator in ourselves so uh let's proceed with aiden yeah um thank you kaidi for your reflection on what i was talking about earlier that's that's exactly what i do research on in the university and that's what makes 
research for me so interesting. Um, as an academic, um, I'm very used to like talking with a lot of students and with a lot of faculty about this idea of cultural diversity. But for me, I think we have to go beyond cultural diversity and we need to consider intercultural competency. So the idea that, um, I, I think this is a big issue in a lot of educational systems where we're learning about other cultures because it's a business advantage or we're learning about another culture in a one-way system. So we're um, so for example, everybody might be learning English because it helps them with getting a job. Um, but what can we learn about our own culture and what can we learn about cultures around us? So again, using that example of ASEAN, or for example, when I was sharing about pronouns, um, is there something like, can we, is there an, an expression or is there something in your culture, in your language that can explain something even better than it can in English, right? So can we use our own cultures? Can we use um, the cultures of Asia as a way of learning um, more about ourselves and more about others? So that to me is um, the significance of cultural diversity and also where we can continue and expand on what cultural, di cultural diversity means. Thank you, Aiden, for highlighting the importance of intercultural competencies and also, uh, yes, uh, you learn more about yourself and you appreciate more uh, your uh, different cultures when you converse with other people, just like what uh, Kaidi said a while ago. So uh, last but not least, uh, may I ask Ms. Jan Warsti for her sharing? Okay. First, Thank you, Mrs. Elsie, for those wonderful questions. And in, when it comes to art and culture, I personally believe that they do not really have a geopolitical boundary. So it is possible, possible one of the best way of culture painting, understanding many, many, many people. To learn about the various culture that exist within a country or the region True things might be overwhelming for some. Therefore, in entrance to a, introduce my culture to the world through various art forms, such as drawing, painting, dancing, traditional dance ritual, etc. For example, in this painting of mine too, in the Revolution Mentalist, you can see the various cultures of Indonesia from its traditional dance to its traditional houses. You can also see flora and fauna that are endemic to Indonesia. I think advocating culture in my art form is very important because as a younger generation, we should be more aware of our own culture and other cultural diversities. This awareness will help us in understanding others and co-editing with each other in pitch and mutual respect. So, itu saja. Terima kasih. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Januarsi. And again, before we end, I'd like to summarize everyone's sharing uh, this evening. Indeed, there's unity and diversity. I believe that's such a cliche saying, and it's been mentioned many, many times this evening. Uh, we come from different backgrounds. We come from different countries, uh, fields of interest. But I guess we have one goal, and that is to celebrate our differences and similarities as well. So again, thank you very much to all our speakers, Aniket, Aiden, Kaidi, Renel, and Janwarsti. And um, it was a pleasure get, getting to know you and your advocacies. I'm sure our audience has developed quite an interest in you guys. And so we'll proceed to the next part of our program, which is more interesting. The open forum will be moderated by the director of the International Cooperation Office, Dr. Margarita Consolacion Ballesteros, and Global Teacher Finalist 2017, Mr. Francis Jim Toscano. Good evening, Director Marge and Sir Jim. You may now take the floor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to all those who are watching us. Good, good evening, Director March. Director March, you're on mute. 
Good evening, Jim, and good morning to Aiden, to early in Vancouver. And of course, uh, good evening to uh, our, um, co our young people from Indonesia and of course from Iloilo, Philippines. And I think it's noon time in India. And uh, in South Africa, I think it's uh, almost um, late afternoon, I suppose. Or, or also uh, uh, still noon time. Anyway, thank you for joining us uh, in this session. And I'm so privileged that uh, our Global Teacher Prize Ambassador, the first ever Filipino GTPA is with us as well. And he allowed us to partner with him via the Empower Ed. Uh, so Jim, I think we have questions for for our young people, and these are coming from our partner organizations. If I may ask the first question. Uh, this question came from Madame Elizabeth Valencia from the Indigenous People's Youth uh, Focal Person of the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples from regions, uh, for Region 6, uh, 7, and 8. Uh, a very workaholic lady who's taking care also of the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples. The question is addressed to Aiden, all the way from Vancouver. I hope, Aiden, you are awake. The question is, uh, how do you describe the Indigenous Peoples in your place? What support do they get from the government and from the private institutions? Thank you I for did. that question, Director Marge. Um, I'm going to share screen so you guys can, just one second. Whoops. Okay. So I guess this is another cultural sharing moment, but in, um, in Canada, we often do a land acknowledgement for our indigenous people. So I will share my land acknowledgement. Um, I acknowledge that UBC um, or Vancouver, where I study, is situated on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Hunkaminam speaking Musqueam peoples, and I am an uninvited guest on their land. So that's a lot of words for two sentences. Um, so I've highlighted the three most important words. So the first word is traditional, which means that the people, the, the indigenous people that live here have, they were the first ones there. Ancestral means that they have not only been the first ones there, but they've also continued to take care of it and pass it down from generation to generation. And the last word, which is the most important, is unseeded, which basically means that when um, European uh, colonizer or European settlers came to Canada, they didn't ask for, for, for permission to set up their homes and their communities on the Indigenous people's land. So these three words are important in the way that I acknowledge and um, recognize the value of reconciliation between indigenous peoples and those of settler heritage. So I would count myself as a settler because I didn't ask for permission to come to this land to study or to live or to work. So I have to respect the um, Musqueam people for um, allowing us to continue using their land that they have protected for generations. Um, so part of this, so the part of, um, Part of our culture in Canada, at the very least, is to acknowledge and reflect on how we are using the land of Indigenous people, but we're not really acknowledging them out. Like, one of the biggest issues that is that we're not an acknowledging them outside of this land acknowledgement. So I told you guys what language they speak. They speak Hunkaminam, but I don't study Hunkaminam in school. I don't speak Hunkaminam at school. Um, I speak English, which is a colonial language. And, at, and in school, I also study Mandarin, which is another colonial language, which has wiped out and has tried to get rid of other minority Chinese languages, such as Cantonese or Hakka or other small dialects. So that is the, that, that's the way that we try to begin the decolonizing, the anti-racism work in North America. Um, so 
I'll give you a little bit of a history lesson. It'll be really, really fast. Um, so Musqueam is the indigenous people I was just talking about. And this was their land historically. Almost 300 years ago, they would have controlled all this land. This, they would have called this their home. But over the past two centuries of Canadian rule and many, many decades of colonialism and taking away their land, this is all that they're left with. So it's this little small orange spot here. So they went from having hundreds and hundreds of uh, kilometers of land down to only about two city blocks. So we've been continuously taking away their land and the university has taken up a lot of this land. This, this portion in the, in the tip of the island or the, the tip of the peninsula is all UBC. It's all of my university and they've taken up all the land of Musqueam. So this is important to um, the way that we talk about um, the, how the Canadian government works with Indigenous people. So yes, we acknowledge them by doing a land acknowledgement before every single class, before every single, every morning in school, we always do a land acknowledgement. But it doesn't ex escape the fact that we've taken so much land from Indigenous people. Um, and this kind of affects the way that Indigenous people are supported by the government. For a long time, Indigenous people were just given money by the government and then they can do whatever they want. But um, oftentimes because of uh, colonialism, they don't know what to do with that money and, and they, they end up um, harming themselves more than benefiting themselves. They might result to um, abusing their children or um, they might end up alcoholic and all these other things just because of trauma from Canadian history. We, in Canadian history, we used to take away children from, like we used to take away indigenous children from their parents. And then we would send them to a special school where they would not learn their language and where the teachers would abuse them. So centuries of doing that have led to a lot of indigenous people not be, knowing how to be, um, how to work in a society. And unfortunately, the government has has just started to realize that giving them money doesn't solve their problems. Um, so now we're beginning the process of, especially in my university, we're beginning the process of providing them support in terms of education, in terms of giving them the tools that they need to succeed. Um, so that includes housing, that includes education, um, access to transit, and um, all these other important things that we take for granted as um, settlers and as people um, of like higher status in society. Yeah. I, I think that was a Thank very- Thank you, Aiden, for that sharing. Uh, Jim? Yeah, that was very insightful sharing. Um, and it really opens. Um, Director March would really agree uh, with me. I think here, um, it's a, it's a, it's, it's like looking at our history also in the Philippines when we have our, you know, our our native uh, brothers and sisters, the people who lived earlier here, and of course we had also histories of colon uh, of being colonized. But I think Aiden's um, sharing has been very helpful for us. To have a, a, a different set of lens or perspective into looking at things. Um, Director March, if I may continue, um, there's a question here from one of our partner organization from Dr. Maria Christine Moiko of Balay Batawili Incorporated. And this is addressed to Kaidi Kama. Um, part of the objectives of this forum is to highlight your experiences and insights on global understanding. Um, but we want to start with the basic unit of society, which is the family, in whatever form it is, normative or not. So our question really is, what foundation did uh, your family contribute to who you are and your vision of a better world? How can you resound back to your family or to particular members of your family the lessons you'll be learning from your experiences or even lessons that you've already learned from a lot. Um, Katie, uh, Katie, I was listening to you. There's a lot of uh, experiences that you have. So one way, one way or another, um, how have you shared it to your family members? Katie? Wow. Um, interesting question. Um, well, the first thing I'd 
what I want to address when I speak about my family is the fact that despite how my family looks, I do not have what I call a nuclear family. And when I say this, I mean it's because my family, even though my my parents who I came th from had three children and live in a household together, and it looks on paper like a nuclear family, being at a, being at a school where nuclear families are kind of like accepted and promoted, I realized that my family isn't like that at all because the way we function in our community is the fact is seeing, I guess, other members of the community as like really important figures in my family. So I'd see my cousins as my siblings and I'd see my uncles and aunts as my other parents. It's just the way my family functions. So that, that's the first thing I want to address when I speak about my, the perspective of my family. Now, in terms of relating um, information and like the information I've gotten from them, um, I'd say that like one thing I'm really grateful is like the strong cultural ties that I, that I have that have been embraced within my household. Um, just the way we function promotes the idea of Pan-Africanism and communalism um, by virtue of one being from two African countries. And also by virtue of, I guess, not functioning in this nuclear way that we'd be expected to or is projected onto us by like, I guess the greater society. So I credit, I definitely credit my family for like um, giving me an understanding of certain traditions that, are, that will still be relevant to apply to my discussion, to the, to the discussions I have into my everyday life. So I'm aware of a lot of aspects of my culture. For an example, um, I often speak to my dad about how to deal with justice and how to deal with um, going about, I guess, conversations that are, that are divisive amongst pupils. So like a structure that I borrowed from is a structure my dad informed me about called um, Pizzo uh, Ya Kota, which is basically, um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard about the Kachacha courts that of Rwanda. Okay, but it's basically a court system used in many African countries where like people, um, I guess, find justice through discourse, discussion and communal judgment. So the community judges and makes certain decisions. So I take, as I take aspects like this from my, from my culture that I've learned from my family and like incorporate that into, I guess, my daily life and my projects that I find interest in as, I, and the projects I've been finding interest in specifically throughout high school. So yeah, um, I, I take a lot from my family in terms of my learnings and take a lot from my community. And I see my community as my family. So I'll describe the two within the same breath, I guess. Wonderful. I think, um... Um, Katie, I love your answer, the way you extended, the way we understand family. And I think that's one message that we have right now. It's to really extend the way we connect with other people, especially that we're talking about diversity and and all those things. Thank you, Katie. Director March. Thank you, Jim and Katie. And now um, there's a question for Aniket. Uh, the question came from Mr. Jose Taton Jr. and Ms. Anna Razel Ramirez of the uh, Panay Indigenous Peoples Advocacy Group, or they call their group as PCAG. Um, Aniket, what is your message to the youth who also have the inner desire to be catalyst of change? in their communities and beyond. Thanks, Dr. Margaret, for asking this question. Uh, it's an important question. So see, I see my teachers. I see Sir Jesus. So the first message is, please teach. I mean, however bizarre it sounds, but then I genuinely want every single person to be a teacher, even if it's for a year, one year, two year volunteering, whatever, because we need the smartest people around to become teachers and change the coming generation for the better. The second thing I would want is 
do your best do your best to earn do your best to have a great life comfortable life but at the same time please make sure you use of your wonderful please make sure to use of your wonderful brain to think about humanity every single day even if it's for 5 minutes even 10 minutes how can you help a person you see struggle or you know is struggling i come from the land of gandhi and gandhi ji said that and i think that is the best definition of putting it gandhi ji said that you should always think about ways of helping the last man in the queue as person who is not very well off a person who is probably suffering health wise how can you help that person who is in the last of the queue i think if you can uh, help that last person Uh, sorry if, i think if we can help the last person in the queue you are sorry i think if you can help the last person in the queue you are helping every single person in the queue anyway so that is my message for the youth and the society you can transform the world provided you think in the right direction start thinking now Thank you Aniket for sharing your very honest and sincere uh, answer to the question and what the message would be that you would like the young people to to get to hear from you as a young people as well help not only those who are asking for it but look at those who really need our help Jim up to the next question please Thank you, Director March. Thank you, Aniket. So this is for Januarsti. Januarsti, this is a question. This is the question from Miss Elsie Lamingan, Cavaliero Paternal, of the Indigenous Peoples Education Section, Schools Division of Iloilo. Um, she said that uh, she's excited to know how your awareness of your own culture has inspired you in producing your artworks. What do you think? Uh, is important for young artists to be rooted in their culture right now or why do you think it's important for young artists to be rooted in their culture Denwarsti Okay I will answer Thank you Mrs. LC for those wonderful questions At the same time I um when it comes to start the arts and culture I personally believe that do not really have a geopolitical boundary. So it is not probably on of the best way of cultivating understanding between people to learn about the various culture that exist within the country or at the region throughout thanks might be overwhelming for some. Therefore, I intend to introduce my culture into the world through various art from Indonesia, such as painting, dancing, traditional, ritual, dance, drawings, murals, etc. For example, in this my painting too, you can see various cultures. Every time I meet someone, I, in the two one paintings, I think advocating culture in my art form is very important because as a younger generation we shall be more aware of our own culture and others cultures to diversities this awareness will help us in understanding others and coexisting with others in pitch and mutual respect and we can understanding together that is mr thank you so much terima kasih thank you janwarsti um i love janwarsti's idea that you know there are different ways for us to com- really communicate with each other and even the way the 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 things that we are passionate about could also become um uh, as our medium to communicate uh, our own culture and be proud of our own culture also uh by the way janwarsti there were a lot of people who were saying and congratulating you for your very wonderful art pieces artworks all right um i will have to continue Thank there you, is, sir. is not i think she's having a problem with now uh, with her internet 
So this is for Renel, our last question. Uh, this is from the Youth Formation Division, Schools Division of Iloilo. Uh, Renel, a lot of films and dramas, even animated ones, are using traditional music, especially um, Asians, uh, Asian music, and incorporating it with mod uh, modern touches. As a person advocating ethnic music, what are your steps or plans in promoting this to a wider audience? And even, I think, the challenge influencing the younger generation. I mean, you're, you guys are still young, but the coming generation also. Renel? Thank you for this wonderful question. Uh, this is a very re relevant issue in our community today. So for me, the best uh, way in making things possible is through educating the filmmakers and who use traditional music uh, uh, in modern aspects. Uh, they must uh, know the history and importance of music, uh, its real purpose, for what it is, and what are the limitations of using music for other purpose. So uh, this should also be validation, uh, uh, also be uh, validation done uh, in the community uh, who owns the music as well as uh, proper uh, consultation with the uh, elders and cultural masters. Uh, this thing uh, can be possibly or possible also in the community uh, if it is given a chance to be involved in their uh, projects so that the community itself uh, can guide uh, the performance and uh, also can give feedbacks and comments to the uh, performance uh, to make the performance better uh, by working together with artists scholars i know that i can promote a re uh, a re uh, uh, and reach a bigger uh, audience in regard and regards of my advocacy because i know i cannot do this alone uh, and to the youth i will educate them uh, that music is not just simple thing for the uh, initiatives. Uh, it is not just a thing for communication, but one uh, significance uh, for our being uh, and identity. Uh, in fact, I thought uh, of project uh, uh, and initiative would widen the youth appreciation towards culture uh, maybe I can cite one example of my advocacy and is that is the Panacultura. So the Panacultura is a culture in a, and heritage on wheels comprises of performance, lectures, and workshops on music, uh, music playing and construction of musical instruments to be brought in different public schools in the region. And I hope this pushes through uh, with everyone's help and prayers. So, thank you. All right, thank you, Renel. I think uh, we're done with this um, additional part of our forum. And thank you for answering our questions. Director March, uh, on to the next part already. Again, thank you to our uh, young, that includes uh, Jim and I, the not so young <laughs> members of this uh, session tonight. And um, may we now call on um, Abigail and um, Thea for the next part of tonight's. Thank you very much. Director March and uh, Mr. Toscano for uh, facilitating the open forum. Uh, we are truly grateful for the participation of our, all of our speakers today. But uh, before we let you go, um, do you have any last words for our young viewers? And maybe if you have any uh, website or social media page uh, that you could share for those people who are interested to get to know you more or your advocacies and interests. Thank you.
Um, sorry, I think I was muted a while ago. So again, I would like to thank everyone for your active participation today. And uh, before we let you go to our speakers, uh, do you have any last words for our young viewers? And also, do you have any website or social media page that uh, people could visit uh, when they want to know more about you or your advocacy and interests? Uh, let's start with Aiden. Yeah, sure thing. So I guess my one last comment to like, I guess wrap everything up would be um, my advice to all youth would be to be, to allow yourself to be in the state of being a non-expert, an unknower and a foreigner, which is not easy to do since we're always expected as students and as young people to learn and to know everything. So I, I would encourage everybody to have those moments at least you know uh, quite like often where you feel un a little bit uncomfortable learning something new so that would be one that would be the one thing i would say and to and that and that you can like look to other cultures and to find new meaning about yourself and to find new understanding about yourself mm -hmm. um in terms of connecting with me you can either email me at a Y D I N Q U A C H at gmail.com. Or you can um, just Google my full name, a like Aiden Quach on Google or whatever search browser and just find my website. It's A Y D I N Q U A C H dot com. And you can contact me there as well. Hmm. Thanks, Aiden. How about Jen Warsti? Me? Okay. For the young generation, right? Um, I'm also. It's very exciting to say that I'm. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Of the young generations. In this way, sorry, it's not okay. Um, in this question, maybe I I can I can answer this question, but but I can answer. If you want to contact me, you can see me in the Facebook. Is the name is Januarsti Supramitani Room, my name, and my email is, ja, is janumita at gmail.com. And in the Instagram, and to Instagram too, you can see me is Januarsti 16 or Januarsti 16. <laughs> Thank you, Januarsti. Yes, you you look good today. I'm really interested on uh, what you're wearing, but uh, unfortunately, oh, yes. we have no time to ask questions about uh, <laughs> your attire. So let's proceed with um, Anike. Okay, so I would like to add that uh, I would like everyone to help the younger generations uh, with their areas of expertise, like Renal is good in music and I don't know how to spell uh, Januarsti, I guess, is good in art. So, so I would like uh, everyone, uh, even the viewers, suppose if someone, they really know that they are struggling, but because sometimes what happens is people, people don't know means how talented they are because they are too young, too young, you know, to know the, how talented they are. If we really help them to find that talent and nurture that, I can. I think they will achieve heights. I mean, I will, they will do really good in their lives. I I hope that everyone helps each other and give them that opportunity. Like uh, even I I want to learn Japanese and I know that I I think Aiden knows Japanese. I I wish he will. I wish he will. He will teach me sometimes because I want to learn Japanese and Chinese in future, not now. So <laughs> if if you really if you really teach someone, I mean, not teach, if you really tutor or help someone, you are really contributing to my project. That is, I am a teenager, I am a teacher. 
in directly you are help, you're teaching someone you're little you're teaching someone changing the lives so and uh, the, if you want to contact me uh, my email id is aniket naidu 2002 at gmail.com i will spell it out for you it's a n i k e t n a i d u 2002 that's 2002 at gmail.com or else you could you could even search aniket naidu tfi tfi stands for teach for india there are a lot of articles written written about us I mean about our projects so you would love that i guess thank you thanks aniket how about you now so my message to youth is uh, maybe a uh, I want to I want to say these words that uh, to my fellow uh, indigenous people of this uh, of the world maybe uh, we need to be in ourselves and promoting our own culture and let it be uh, an inspiration for the non-IPs also to uh, to understand and appreciate the cultures and norms that uh, uh, it is not uh, um, equal in their insights. But we must push or not, uh, we must uh, make our culture as a bridge or uh, a thing or a device for. Uh, communications and cultural diversity and uh, I just have a short message to the youth and be strong and persistent with your advocacy because we can be uh, the um, agents of change for a better world so thanks for now you, uh, uh, okay. add, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Me with NFB uh, 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 just search my name uh, Renel, yes, uh, only. Thank you. Thanks, Renel. And uh, finally, uh, let's hear uh, Kaidi's message. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, I think my simple message is just encouraging you to engage as much as much as possible, and remember that when you engage, a safe space is not a space without consequence because. Um, oh, safe, having no consequences may mean that that space is safe for you, but it, but no consequences means that like the safe is in space for the space isn't safe for somebody that you may have used your words. So, I'd also that being said, I'd also like to remind people that consequences are a necessary part of engaging, a necessary part of growing, and to open yourself to. Enjoy those consequences and, learn from them. and continue engaging and giving yourself space to learn um, with all of that in mind. Um, and as for um, where you can contact me, um, I'll give my email. Um, my email is kaedilorakokama at gmail.com and that is spelled K-A-E-D-I-L-O-R-A-K-O-K-H-A-M-A um at gmail.com i'm also on social i'm also on instagram and twitter my instagram and twitter name is kind of straight it's kind of weird so like um it's breast milk with a c at the end um but that's where you can find me on twitter and instagram and um i do post parts of my advocacy projects on my social media pages so if you want to find different information about the activities I participate in, um, you can find me on those pages on Instagram and Twitter, same name. Thanks guys. And now let us proceed with the awarding of virtual certificates for our speakers. Um, technical team, could you please share the certificates? So I'll, I'll, I'll read the citation. Uh, okay. Republic of the Philippines, Department of Education, Deped Complex, Morocco Avenue, Pasig City. This certificate of participation is hereby awarded to Aniket Balaram Naidu for sharing his valuable knowledge and insights as a resource speaker during the International Youth Forum on Cultural Diversity 
held on 21 May 2021 via StreamYard and Facebook Live. Given this 21st of May 2021, signed Leonor Magtolis Briones, Secretary. The same certificate is also awarded to um, Aiden Quach, Genuarsi Sopramita Ningrum, Kaidi Kama, and lastly, Renel S. Lavilla. Once again, let's give a round of applause to our very inspiring speakers. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. We wish you success in your respective careers, and especially Aniket, who's having his exams this week. And may your advocacies touch more lives. Thank you, Aniket, um, Aiden, Januarsti, Kaidi, and Renel. See you next time, and stay safe. Goodbye. Thank you, guys. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank you. Terima kasih. To formally close our event, uh, let us listen to the closing message of the Undersecretary for Curriculum Instruction of the Department of Education, Undersecretary Gisdado M. San Antonio. I think we're currently having some technical difficulties with playing the video of Undersecretary San Antonio. Please kindly bear with us for a few, for a few seconds. Our apologies for the technical glitches, and I'm not sure if we can still play the closing message of Undersecretary Mateo, uh, I mean Undersecretary San Antonio. And on behalf of the Department of Education and our partner institutions, our partner organizers for this night's webinar, we'd again like to thank our speakers for gracing us um, in this event. And we would like to extend as well our sincere gratitude to our viewers, and we hope this webinar has brought forth new learnings to all of you. Once again, I'm uh, Thea. And I'm Abby. Thank you, and have a pleasant evening, everyone.